What's going on guys and welcome back to episode number 8 in this series. So today we are actually finishing our chat from the last video. So you'll see that the chat isn't even here anymore and that's because we added a very cool effect where when we click on it, it slides in and when we click on it, it slides out and it looks pretty freaking cool. So obviously there's a few things I wanna clean up about it, but for right now, this looks pretty good for what we're looking for and comment down below what you guys think about this, if you like it or if there's anything you would change. And then also we added this cool scroll bar which is actually just a jQuery plugin that I show you guys how to actually use and implement. It's pretty easy to use. And then obviously we just styled our messages and stuff here and it's pretty much ready now for us to actually add the actual messages in there from the game. So I'll probably get to do that either today or tomorrow. And in the next video, you guys will actually get to see the actual game chat in here and working, which is gonna be super cool. And then I also hinted at some work that I had done in the past couple of days when I wasn't recording but I didn't actually show you guys the update for it because I want to save that, hopefully as a surprise, but I might end up showing it in a later video. As you guys can see, I actually changed the icon down here for the production queue, and that's what I did for the past couple days was just build a new, brand new production queue, and it looks super cool, and it works super well. I'm super excited about it, and I can't wait for you guys to see it, and hopefully, like I said, I want to keep it as a surprise for the actual release because if I show you guys everything, then there's not going to be anything to surprise you with. So just hang in there and maybe I might show it in the later videos if you guys really want to see it. But in any case, I hope you guys really enjoy this episode and be sure to leave me a like down below if you are enjoying this series so far. That really means a lot to me and subscribe to my channel if you are loving the content. And now let's get started with finishing this chat. All right guys, so here we are at the beginning of this video and I'm just gonna go ahead and get started. So the first thing that we're gonna be doing, let's take a look at our Illustrator file. So we're obviously gonna be finishing up this chat and right here there's a few things we wanna add. So we basically would just wanna work on this box right now. So we wanna get this text actually in here and be able to you know line them up correctly and, and that's not too complicated all we're really doing here is just adding text tags and then a span to color the name or whatever but we can go ahead and add that right now so i'm just going to first jump into our html file that we have here and you can see we have our hd messages which is where our messages are going to go right above the input so let's just say here that we want to add i mean we could do divs but uh, in this case, there's really no need. So let's just say, let's do like H3 tags here. And let's say a name, and then we'll go ahead and say, this is a message. All right, so let's just see how that looks now on the screen. So what we can do here is actually use this plugin that I have uh, right now, which is just a jQuery plugin for uh, custom scroll bars. And so if we go ahead and let's just say we want to, well, first let's jump into the script. So in here, I'm already using this on the production mod. And I know I told you guys that <laughs> I did work on the production queue, but I didn't want to show what I did just yet because I kind of wanted it to be a surprise. But for now, we're just going to use this plugin. So what I have here is I'm basically just creating a new variable and it's a jQuery object where I grab that um, list scroll that we're using inside of the new production queue that I actually built, which is down here. So this is all the stuff that we're using for that production queue and you'll see that this is the scroll right here. And this is where all the content goes for all your items that are in your queue. Basically what we can do is take the same exact thing. So if we jump in, here and let's just say we want to copy this stuff and jump into the game so that when we load we want that chat to actually in it with that module so actually instead of doing a new function we'll just put this at the bottom over here and then what we'll do is we'll jump in and say that we want our in this case our chat messages hd chat messages to use this module so we'll just paste that right here and then i just made a custom theme that's just the game default and it's really not much actually in that custom theme it's just like i changed the color of one thing i mean the the way the scroll bar looks is pretty cool by default so it's it's fine to use that and so now let's just take a look. Um, obviously nothing's gonna happen because of the fact that this div obviously isn't scrolling right now, but what we can do, and actually let me show you guys where I got this scroll bar real quick. So basically I just went to Google, and then if you just do um, JavaScript, 
plugin custom scroll bar right here. So I just clicked on the first one right here. jQuery custom content scroller. You can read through this. It, it tells you how to set it up. It's really simple. And then you'll see this is what we're doing with ours right here. So if you guys want to use this for your own stuff, it's, it's super easy to do. It only takes like one line of code basically to get it working after you put in the files and everything. So now we have that HD messages and obviously we don't have enough stuff in there. So what we can do is in our HTML here, we can just duplicate this line like a bunch of times just so we can see a ton of, oh, wrong thing. So we can see a ton of those pop up and now you'll see our scroll bar actually comes up here. So now we're actually able to scroll inside of this div, which is super cool because I mean like that only took like a second to do. Obviously we have to fix like the, the margins and stuff on this, which actually it's pretty simple to do because what we can do is actually just set in our CSS if we look at our messages we've got the height here but what we would want to do is we could just make the height a little smaller so if we made it minus 45 instead and then just gave it a margin bottom of 10 pixels it should look pretty good like that so actually that looks a lot better I think so yeah we're the text gets cut off obviously because we can't have it run all the way down anyways. And then we get our nice scroll bar with our nice margin in there and that actually looks really good. And so I just wanna see what it looks like with longer messages. So when you actually grab a message and you know just make it a lot longer, you'll actually have the content sit like this. So you'll see that it's a little bit messy with the line height and um, also obviously we need some margins in here between these pieces of text because obviously they're like sitting right on top of each other. So what we can do is actually jump back into our CSS and so we made an H3 tag for all of those. If we just wanna do HD chat messages and then access those H3s, let's just give them margin top and bottom of like two pixels and then we don't need margins on the left and right. But if we take a look, it should be a little bit more spread out now. So we've got a little bit more space to work with. I mean, we could go a little bit more on the margins if we wanted to, like if you wanted to do four pixels, let's see. So we're starting to get a little bit more spread out and it's starting to look a little bit better. So the other thing we want to do is like, it looks kind of funny when the text is the same size as the name, because we want the name to be a little bit bigger than the text. And actually the text looks kind of big to me right now. But if we do a span there and then we'll go ahead and just say that the H3 will have a font size of let's say 12 pixels for now and then we're going to just do our chat mess or chat messages h3 span and we're just going to increase the font size for that span whoops 14 pixels let's say and let's just see what happens with that top one so the top one you can see the font size is definitely a little bit bigger than this one is because we only added the span to the first one um, but actually I think it could go a little bit bigger and I think the, the font is probably a little, a little bit too small so let's try 16 and 13 and see how that looks so I think it's getting there I mean it's probably still a little bit too small but I kind of like the small text it looks a little bit nicer to me you can see that the multi-line looks okay too the the text might even need more spacing but actually once we color the name which let's do that right now so let's say we wanted to get that purple text that we're using in there so now we've got our purple name and you can see purple is probably not the best color here because it's pretty dark on this dark background so we could even use this blue color that we're using right here, which would be, you know, easy enough to grab for us. But see, that looks a lot better. I think it's it's bright enough and it goes with our color right here. So I think that'll actually work for us. Let's try our, go back to our jQuery plugin just to check to see how they actually do um, scrolling, set the scroll all the way to the top. Oh, okay, here, I, I okay, I found it. So we have a, uh, down here we have the methods for the plugin and here you can actually use um, a scroll to method when you call the actual bar and you can tell it where you want it to go so I was right they do have a bottom and you can so you have all of these that are just string types so what we can do is use that bottom in this case and what we want to do is make sure that whenever they open the chat that it would do that and since we don't actually have all that function functionality set up for actually using and opening the chat I'm just going to set it to do that here. I believe I should be able to do that. Uh, let's see. 
Okay, so what we would do in this case is just call a separate one. So after this, we would call just a, so just a scroll to and then the string of where we want it to scroll to. And I believe that's all we need. So there's three parameters here, but obviously if we don't have any options, it shouldn't need us to pass any options in. So we should be fine with that. And you'll see, there we go. So as soon as it loaded up, it like scrolled us to the bottom. But just to clean this up, let's remove a bunch of these. And if we just have one, obviously it's just gonna sit at the top because there's nothing to scroll. But we don't really have to worry about what it looks like with one or two messages because obviously there are already a ton of messages in the game and we don't we never have to worry about there not being any messages in the chat. So in this case, we could just duplicate this new line that I made a bunch of times. And then you'll see now we have our nice scrolling box here with our actual names and stuff in it. And it looks it's starting to look pretty cool now. So now let's actually build the little arrow at the top because I don't think I built these arrows. I didn't show you guys how I did the arrows, which is pretty simple. It's not like anything crazy. It's just a div with some rotation on it. So if we just look back on our, well, first on our HTML, or sorry, HTML page, and we actually look to see what we're doing here. We have, these are actually the top things. So we have an arrow right here. So this arrow is what's actually sliding out from these. And so in this case, we could just, you know, copy the styles that we're actually using on this arrow, which in this case is these styles here. So you'll see it's just a width and a height of 20 and then it's got a border and it's got all of the other stuff we needed and then it's just got this right here. So it's got to translate because we're actually moving it and then it's got a rotate. So in this case, we can just copy these and actually let's copy that style and then if we jump or let's make an actual div for this now. So inside of our option window, let's make our div here and we'll just give this actually a class of HD window arrow. So the HD window arrow class, let's go ahead and just give that some styles. So we'll just jump down here and make the uh, HD window arrow class styling and we'll just paste in those styles that we had from before. Now obviously there's a few things we're gonna wanna change. So obviously we don't want to edit the translation in this case because we're not actually gonna animate this arrow or just going to have it be there by default. So there's no reason to have a transition or translations or anything like that. We're just going to position it and keep it there. The height and everything is fine. And then what we'll do is it's got a left of 50% already and a margin left. So it should be centered on the X axis. Now we just have to center it on the Y. So let's just give it a top or not center it on the Y. We would actually want it to be just a negative 10 pixels on the top and hopefully that shows up there so there we go now we have that actual arrow show up on our screen and in this case we could give it a little bit more because of that border on it so like maybe that would be enough all right so i'm not exactly sure why that arrow is not sitting <clears throat> below our message panel right here i'll have to mess around with it later and figure it out i'm not gonna like waste a bunch of time with it right now but as you can see, it doesn't look too bad actually with the arrow sitting on top. I still would prefer it under, but in this case, uh, it's definitely something we can work with. So I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it like that for now. And obviously this arrow, it's too close to this guy. So I'm just gonna go ahead and move the entire window down a bit. So right now we have our option window and it's set to 140%. Let's try 150 and see how that looks. So obviously the percentages go really slow because we're dealing with percentage of this guy. So it's it's one and a half of these. I think that's pretty good actually. It sits right there and you'll see that we still have this happen when we slide over, which we wouldn't want that to happen. So actually what we would do for that is you would want to make it so that the actual option itself has a separate class for its transition. And then what you would do is whenever you open up the chat window, you would just remove the class that does that. Okay, one second before I actually do that. So this is why before, if we look at our HTML structure, you'll see that we have an HD option and then we have the HD option inner. And that's why the arrow is able to sit on the bottom just because we're making an inner uh, div inside of this one. And so this one's the actual wrapper, but it doesn't actually have the styles. So this one is the one that has the styles and then they're both sitting inside of the same parent. And then you basically just give the, the actual or the arrow class, um, you give it a negative Z. So it sits under this uh, inner one. So I'll end up doing something similar with the actual content for our window. 
that we have, but in this case, I just wanted to explain that real quick. And then you'll see what we have for our, our styles is that whenever we hover over the option, which is that container, it's telling us whenever we hover over that, we want to edit this inner. So it would be simple enough to just do HD option and then define a new hover class like this and then just say hover HD option inner. And what we would do is actually add these transitions and everything to that class. So what we would do is basically add and remove this class from our option here. So that would be how it would actually work. So we would get rid of this one. And basically all we have to do is take all the hovers we have and just add that hover class. Or So just do dash hover to the end of these. And now you'll notice when we go back that this isn't going to work anymore, obviously, because we don't have that class applied. So all we have to do is copy this class, jump into our HTML, and just make sure that we give the options. So all of our HD options that we have here, we want to just give them, we want to just give all of these that class. So there's only four of them here, so we just paste those into all four of those. And then you'll notice now we have that back which is super cool because all we have to do now is just add and we can just use jQuery in this case to add and remove these classes whenever we open up the actual content. Before we mess around with any of that, we actually want to build something that allows us to open up this chat. In this case, we would create probably a new module that actually manages the chat. But what we can do is just actually create that stuff inside here for now. So for right now, we're just going to do something super simple. I'm just going to have it so that when you click on this, it'll open it. If you click on it again, it'll close it. Uh, it's going to be a little bit different than that later. But for right now, it's uh, just something we'll do quick. So the function, let's just do our uh, toggle chat function down here. And what we're going to do is actually use this animation module that I finally get to show you. So in this case, what I'm going to do is just make a new global variable. And like I said, I'm probably going to end up changing this, but we'll just do a chat opened and we'll set that to false. So we know that the chat is not opened when we start the game. And then what we'll do is go ahead and just edit some of our CSS in here. So we want to actually remove this window. So in this case, this window by default, let's say they're displayed none and then just opacity of zero because we want to fade this thing out. And now we're giving this thing a translation, but we're going to have to change this just because we're actually going to be animating the translation. So we don't want this to mess it up. So what we're going to do is actually in this case, just define a margin left of negative 200 pixels. And that should just center us again because our width is 400. So we're going to actually be able to animate this. So what we're going to do is first let's add a listener. So let's say that we want to grab our doc.getElement by ID and let's just check to see if this actually even has an ID. So this option doesn't even have an ID. So we'll just add one real quick and say the option HD option chat. And so that should be unique. Let's just make sure. Okay, so that's unique ID and just save that. And then we'll jump into our index page and just grab that ID and we'll just go ahead and add an event listener and a click event listener to call a function and that function will be to toggle that chat window. So now what we're going to do here is just check to see whether the chat is open or closed because there's just different things we want to do based on that. So in this case, we'll check to see um, we're going to create a variable for where we want to start the opacity. Let's say we just want to fade it in and out for now. So let's say our start opacity equals um, in this case, we want to check to see if the chat window is opened, then we want it to be start at one and end at zero. And then the end opacity, we want to check to see the chat if it would, in this case, if it's closed, we want it to start at zero and end at one because we want it to fade in at the end. So now let's go ahead and use our actual easy animate. And in this case, go ahead and just define a new, or in this case, our elements array, which in this case is just going to have our doc.getElementById and have that HD chat in there again. And then we're going to just go ahead and give it styles, a styles array and a new style for the opacity and a start of SO and an end of EO, those variables that we just made. So that's really all you have to do in this case. So let's try this out and see if it actually works. So we click here and now you'll notice that I made a mistake because obviously I added the animation to the button. So if we go in here, we want to add it to the window. 
So in this case, we could add an ID to the window and that's probably the easiest way to do it. So we'll just do the HD window in this case is the actual ID for this guy, let's say. And then we'll go ahead and use that in here instead. So hopefully that'll work a little bit nicer now. Right, okay, so I forgot a couple things. So the idea here is that this is also displayed none besides just the opacity. So we are fading in the opacity, but it's not really gonna do anything unless we actually display this guy. In this case, if the chat is opened, or we'd wanna say if the chat isn't opened, we'd wanna get the chat window here, and we would actually just want to do a display and actually set it to block. So what that'll basically say is that if the chat isn't open, that means we must be opening it, which means we wanna actually display it. So that'll actually give us a display now of block if we're actually opening the chat. So now if we try it, it should work here. So you'll see now we got that nice fade in on the text. And then when we click it, you're gonna see that it's obviously just going to keep fading in like that. But now in this case, so obviously when we click on it, we're just fading it in every time. And obviously when we click on it again, we want it to fade out. So the idea is that at the end of this, basically just do chat opened equals not chat opened. So what that'll do is just reverse it no matter what it is. So if it's true, it'll go false. If it's false, it'll go true. And it'll just go back and forth like that. So now you'll see when I click on it, it fades in. If I click on it, it fades out. And it will do that over and over again for us. And that looks pretty good now. So now just to make sure that that gets displayed none again when we're finished, we actually have an on animation end property that we can call. And at the end of the function, we just want to say that, and the way I'm writing this actually isn't ideal, but technically you would check to see if the chat was not opened again, because this is going to reverse it, which means that, uh, it's going to be the opposite of what it was when this called. So it would technically be the same thing. So in this case, just copying this same line and actually just writing that here and just displaying none should work for us. So now if we do this and then we uh, go ahead and click on it, it should display none and you'll see it does because we can scroll over this stuff now. And so another thing I'll just show you real quick is adding another style to this. So we'll do inside of our styles array, add another one with the name for our transform. And now our transform is actually going to start in this case, let's just use, if we wanted to animate the Y position, say for instance, so we actually have it slide down and then slide back up, we could do our start uh, X position and we'll check to see if the chat is open, then we wanna start at zero. But if it's already open, let's say we want it to go to negative 100. And then we'll basically just do the opposite of that for the end position. So we start at negative 100 and go to zero. So now if we go ahead and add that in here, and we'll just do the start is the start x, the end is the end x, and then we add a correct to this, because obviously it's not just an integer like the opacity. Uh, we actually need this to be a string value for the style because we need it to translate and we can do a translate 3d and then what we do to give this it will say zero on the x and then we do percent v and then pixels so what it is is percent v will get replaced with our value and then we do zero on the z value and that should give us what we're looking for so there now you can see that when we actually click on this it'll it'll slide down and then slide out and fade uh, it doesn't look that great because it's actually sitting on top of the header, which ideally we would have it sitting under the header. But I'll go ahead and fix that at some other point. But you can see that we got our effect going now, which is super cool. So we've got this sliding out and sliding back in, and it's starting to look pretty cool. So just to review for this video, we were able to get this animating up and down just by clicking on this guy. And then we we're also able to put in our scrolling and get these things styled, which is super cool. So what I'm gonna do at another point is actually add in all the Ajax and get the chat messages from the actual game displayed in here. And it's gonna be super cool. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And remember to like the video, that helps me out a lot. And to comment down below with any suggestions, ideas, comments, whatever you have, just, just post it down below and I'll definitely get back to you guys. I love hearing your positive feedback. It like keeps me going on these videos. And then just remember to subscribe to my channel if you're liking the content and you wanna see more, definitely subscribe. So just click right here on the screen, right on my face, and uh, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss anything. And I will see you guys in the next video.